Hello and welcome my friends. Today we have something uh, that I've been waiting for a while and it is Jubel content. Yes, we had already I think one Jubel deck profile uh, back then with the ever loving defender or something, whatever you're called. Now we have the next one. Yes, I know. But uh, yeah, the mailman took his sweet time with my Phantom of Jubel copies and uh, yeah, now we can make that deck profile. Uh, there's still some time for Fiendsmith coming out. And again, the big question is, will it be affordable? Uh, probably not, but uh, that's a question for another day. Today, we're going to look at just normal Ubel without Fiendsmith. Uh, it's maybe not the most best, the most competitive version, maybe, but it is the most fun version, I'd like to say. It is a Ubel version, right, sticking close to uh, what the original character uh, was trying to do, I think. I hope and let's get right into it. Okay, then let's get right into the deck profile. We go with the main deck. Obviously we play Ubel and Terror Incarnate and uh, yeah, as I said, we are being a bit uh, funny and uh, yeah, obviously in a true Ubel deck, the ultimate nightmare can't be missed. Uh, sure, we all know it's just an unnecessary brick, but uh, yeah, I, I like it. I mean, I've waited for dozens of years uh, to finally be able to play Ubel, I'm going to play all the Ubel. Uh, well, more or less, the most important Ubels in my heart at least. With that out of the way, uh, we continue with 3 Spirit. Not much uh, yet to be said. It's an amazing card with the uh, potential to search the Ubel uh, non once per turn. Just amazing, just amazing. Then, uh, yeah, with the Will of D. Samsara D Lotus, not much to say. It's the uh, yeah, best normal summon in the deck, I guess. Three Grave Squirmer, not much to add. Just uh, yeah, another pop for the deck uh, to trigger more of our effects and obviously the potential to summon back cards from the graveyard. Uh, just, yeah, just so much fun that we have these support cards. Uh, again, now everyone is doing it. Uh, two uh, Nightmare Pain. Uh, at the start, people were running three, and uh, yeah, good that we came to an agreement with that one. Then, obviously, the big money card, more or less, a Nightmare Throne, and uh, yeah, a fourth one. Yeah, this card is uh, yeah, a one card, perfect combo, the best on board, more or less, uh, from a one card combo can be made with this one. Yeah, every other option is okay, but uh, Nightmare Throne just uh, is just phenomenal. Uh, also the potential to uh, yeah shuffle back some cards into uh, the deck or extra deck is just nice. Miscellaneous cards, uh, Mature Chronicle and Eternal Favorite. For these two it's just nice to have the options, right? If you already uh, have drawn into the Nightmare Paint for example, then uh, yeah you can search one of these for uh, either the uh, search of Super Poly or extension or uh, yeah, what is it, uh, the Super Poly as a trap card, right? Yeah, just good, just good, and uh, having these options, yeah, doesn't hurt, doesn't hurt. Then, some consistency cards, two P Rise maps. You could also look into playing Prosperity or something like that, but honestly, the extra deck, uh, yeah, you don't really want to banish these cards, so, uh, yeah, having this as, like, more names of your uh, D-Lotus is just really nice. Uh, additionally, obviously, another card with 0-0 zero, zero that this can search is... The Beckoning Beast, uh, we are playing only two. I think uh, playing three is maybe a bit too crazy. Yes, you want to see it, but you're not too reliant on it. And with cards like Rice Map, uh, we have um, other ways to get into it if we really want it. And obviously uh, the opening of the Spirit Gates, where I say we can play three, because having two in hand is actually not that bad, due to the ability to uh, make yeah, good use of the discard and so on and so on. Yeah, so uh, two and three is my ratio for this. But uh, honestly, I don't think it makes too much of a difference. Uh, it's just how I liked it uh, so far. And then a very small Unchained package. Yeah, a bigger Unchained package with uh, at least the Blue Dog is something that I run in the past. And sure, it worked out, but yeah, at times it was just win more. And at other times you had just a dead card in hand that, I mean, you could discard and then benefit from that. But yeah, not always the way you want to go th about this. And obviously we play Chamber for, yeah, I think the better combos, right? The escape is, is good, but I think Chamber is just better. Uh, that's about it. And I think it's now like, what is it, 12 or so non-engine? Well, whatever, we can count together. Uh, we're playing Nip, 
above other ha classical hand traps due to the fact that uh, similar with i don't know mikanko uh, giving your opponent a big monster that you can either attack into or force them to attack right it's just uh, beneficial for easy otks and the thing is usually the one for one hand traps like uh, imperm which we are playing too they're good right valor uh, ash and so on it's fine but usually that doesn't stop too many decks uh, sure in the mirror they are better than uh, nibiru but also just okay-ish uh, and like one hand trap versus snake eye is just not enough uh, so i think nibiru gambling on them not making a monster negate on their fifth summon is uh yeah more beneficial and comes up more often than just going oh ash blossom on snake eye ash and then getting like cucked because they have four more extenders in hand then uh tactics to Go help with go first, go second. This tag is obviously really good going first, so uh, yeah, we have it more here for going second options. But uh, yeah, this is a side deck, less deck here uh, for the deck profile, so I'll just put it in. Another one that helps with uh, going first or going second, actually, due to the fact that you can uh, banish the Promethean Princess from Grave called by is pretty nice. And then lastly, obviously, uh, yeah, people have cut it because. Well, the meta doesn't allow it and you need to play non-engine, Bob Breaker's not that popular and so on and so on. But Super Poly in a Ubel deck, man, we can't really do without that. Uh, well, maybe we are forced to in the future, but uh, so far I like to run it and uh, yeah, I mean, we even have a Super Poly extra deck monster, so uh, yeah, we can't, uh, we can't just ignore this. Super Poly is still very nice and uh, yeah, helps uh, tremendously. That's it for the main deck and now going into the extra as mentioned the ever loving defender uh yeah has to uh, has to be there i mean we have a Ubel card right finally this was one of the earlier announced uh Ubel support cards uh, after what was it 15 or 16 years or so of waiting yeah we we can't utilize this i i, I mean i just can't do that so yeah we play this one paired up with two phantoms you could play three if you have that much money, but also uh, I think two is just like fine. Uh, sure, there are moments where you just make one as an uh, as an extender or as a body, and in that case, you might uh, need a third one later down the duel. But if you have access to throne, as I said before, you can uh, shuffle this one back from the uh, graveyard. So it's 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 okay if you have a third one. You you're a safer side, but uh, also the extra deck is tight due to us playing super poly, right? But uh, yeah, two is more than enough even you like if you're on tight budget you can make two with one but uh, yeah you are noticing uh, having uh, one uh, more than having only two then obviously the super poly targets right the fusions not much to say then i'm playing the panzer here i don't know what the english translation is isn't it liebe or something uh or, no is it gustav max uh, whatever like one of the trains uh, obviously for the easy OTK um, it doesn't come up as often but it helps it helps right there are other options uh, I'm going to talk about them in a bit but uh, yeah this is one of the more cuttable cards uh, if you are playing the super poly if you are not playing super poly then of course the other three but uh, yeah this one it's nice but uh, yeah it doesn't come up as often anymore there obviously was the geist grinder column uh, combo but uh, yeah, we're, we're not playing that one anymore then one Rudras, uh, yeah, just an amazing card, the new rank 10 Baron, more or less. Um, yeah, very nice, very nice. Uh, lovely that we can make it so reliably. Then coming into the links, the one Almirage. This could also be Anima, but uh, yeah, Almirage doing the job just fine. And another Mudcracker. Um, yeah, for some combos, for some lines, uh, having that one is nice. It's not needed for the main combo, but it's a nice utility card that helps you when you get hand trapped, interrupted, or have a sub power hand. Then for the baller cards, Yama and Rage. Obviously, with Rage, we're going into SP. And uh, yeah, you can play Anguish, but uh, yeah, Anguish comes up more often um, when you go like second, make Anguish, climb into uh, the access code, and then yeah, you have enough damage on board. To uh, OTK, that is good. That is good. But again, we are lacking a bit of space, and also I feel like, like does it come up <laughs> all too often? It's a, it's a bit iffy. Uh, a bigger thing for me personally is like playing a second Yama. This is something that I like to do, but 
Again, uh, yeah, not too possible right now due to my love for Super Poly. But uh, yeah, again, if you're not playing Super Poly, uh, yeah, playing a second Yama is, should be high on your priority list. Then we're playing the Promethean, just uh, makes uh, Jubel end boards that much better. And for that, we play the Doolittle. This could also be the Amblo Whale, but I think Doolittle is quite a bit better uh, due to it being um, able to search out the Shavara to then pop the princess in our turn so that we're not fire locked anymore. Yeah, you can have preferences here, but I would advise uh, for the Doolittle. And then lastly, an Appaloosa. Um, yeah, just comes up here and there. It is not the regular, uh, the most regular end board card, but uh, yeah, having it is just nice, obviously. Now, uh, yeah, talking about the DDD, why is he not in here? Uh, yeah, with the Shyama, again, I said it, uh, often it's just a dead cat in hand. You can discard it and then revive it. So on. It's not bad. It's not bad. Again, I played it and it was good. But uh, yeah, we're going to go into like rank sixes with Fiend Smiths later on. So so for now, I just want to enjoy a bit more of a pure fun build, uh, especially if like maybe Fiend Smith is it even worth it uh, if it gets banned out 100% uh, uh, after six weeks or so. Uh, yeah, I, I'm still considering. Uh, maybe not even buying it, but regardless, uh, yeah, you could go for more uh, Unchained cards. I think Jesse runs uh, or plays the, that version of Ubel, and I mean, it looks pretty cool. It is uh, a lot more resilient. In contrast to that, you lack the space for non-engine, uh, which in my uh, case, I played some sort of like go second cards. You can go for more hand traps, you can go for more board breakers. Uh, more Unchained cards, putting them into your deck is not going to be a detriment. And then you can play something like Abomination, which obviously is just, uh, yeah, more so facilitating uh, more Jubel and Unchained plays. So uh, yeah, this is something that is very interesting and absolutely valid. In this case, I have decided against it, but uh, yeah, you do you. Uh, in case you can just play these two cards, um, just add this as the, four, the 41 and uh, swap this out maybe for the Liebe or Gustav Max, Gustav Max again, I think that's the name and then you are a okay. Okay, my friends, now I'm going to show you a, a one card combo. I think uh, like variations of like spirit gates, two card combos are all too common, but I just want to show you again. Uh, yeah, just Nightmare Throne, just the field spell alone is just everything that you want. And uh, yeah, we are not even scared of board breakers in the classical sense too much anymore. Uh, but let me just show you instead of yapping all the way. So first of all, activate the Nightmare Throne. And with that, we're going to search the uh, D Lotus. Normal summon D Lotus, effect to tribute. And then we're going to special out the spirit. Spirit effect, let's place it here. Uh, spirit effect, set the nightmare pain. Activate the nightmare pain to pop spirit to search the grave squirmer. Activate spirit and the nightmare throne. Summon Ubel, add the Terror Incarnate, and summon the Terror Incarnation. The glare is, as always, beautiful. Wonderful. That's what we want to see. Then we can link these two away into Yama. And this is, have you counted with me? One, two, three, four, five. This is our fifth summon. So if they want to Nibiru us, this is now the moment. And uh, yeah, actually, let's not forget the armor effect at Shavara. Um, but yeah, like they want, they can uh, do this now and uh, nip our one Yama on field. Uh, we still have all kinds of follow up. Uh, yeah, it just, it's annoying, but it doesn't stop us from going off. So uh, yeah, this is their last moment to nip us because we are going to uh, shuffle back the Ubel and the D Lotus into our deck into our deck they go to summon the phantom let's summon it here is it good to see well somewhat and uh yeah now we're nip proof and uh yeah now we're hand trap proof to some extent right uh obviously it's going to cost us into our interaction if they uh like should choose to hand trap us but uh who really cares it's uh not enough then we're going to activate the grave squirmer in hand to summon we're not going to use the uh, second half to destroy something we don't need that right now and then we're going to link that with the yama 
into the bridge. Then we're going to use the uh, effect of the Grave Scrummer to banish itself to summon back the spirit. Um, yeah, we are hand trap proof, but I would just advise to leave the uh, extra monster zone under rage open uh, in case you need to summon a, a mud cracker, a mud wrecker, or whatever uh, underneath it, uh, or something like that. But uh, yeah, it doesn't really matter still. Anyway, we summoned the spirit of the Grave Skirmer effect. Now we can pop it with our added Shavar. Summon Shavar. Uh, effect spirit and effect of Yama. Yama to banish. To summon back the spirit and spirit effect uh, again it's not once per turn we can summon the ubel now we have swarmed our field let's link away our uh shower because currently we are fiend blocked which it's not a big problem usually but um yeah there are some monsters we want to summon that aren't uh fiends anyway we link them away into the promethean princess activating the effect of shavara to uh, set the chamber Let's just leave it open so you can see. And then Promethean effect, summon back the red dog and link these two away into the doodle. So right now we are not fiend or uh, fire locked anymore. And that means we can, uh, let's put here, we can overlay our level tens into the Rudras. And let's just leave it in defense position. So now let me just quickly go through the order of interruptions again so uh, that we are all on the same page, right? Because again, there's an order to things. We have to start with the Verudris to negate or destroy, it doesn't matter, right? If you discard both or one. Uh, but it's important that the Ubel leaves um, its status as an Exe material and goes into the grave. So that if we use the Phantom of Ubel to negate something, then we can destroy a Spirit of Ubel in our graveyard, trigger its effect, and summon a Ubel back. Why is that super sexy and important? Uh, I mean, we can just use the Phantom as we want, but uh, getting Ubel onto the field is key because then our Nightmare Pain um, OTK thread and uh, yeah, that shenanigans that stays live. Otherwise, if we do this in the wrong order, right? If we use the Phantom earlier and can't get anything out of the Phantom, um, or Nightmare Pain stops being a threat. So that's why it is so key to use these as Verudras. First Verudras and then the Phantom. Coming to the second part, we have to use the uh, Chamber with uh, Rage and then with Rage, um, using Rage to go into the SP and then SP Banish, SP Banish itself, right? And then lastly, right, this has to be the last one, again, due to the fire lock that Promethean Princess um, causes. Uh, do little effect, add this to hand. And that's how our board looks like if we have used everything. We are still uh, having the Nightmare Pain lock on our opponent. Let's put Jubel somewhere else. Um, and we might have the Verudras still left, right? This depends on uh, if we want to destroy then we just have Rudras without material, uh, or if we want to keep it. Regardless, uh, we have the Promethean Princess on board, which we will get rid of uh, with the Shavara in our turn, but we have used the seven interruptions that this one card combo has uh, gifted us. Very lovely, very nice, and uh, yeah, thank you Jubel for offering these uh, nice card boards to us. So my friends, how did you like these Jubel cards piled together and calling it a deck? Uh, yeah, obviously, again, it's not the most competitive build, I know, right? We're going to talk maybe about competitive u build and like the best version, right? Uh, depending on how the ban list in August is going to be, um, maybe Snake Eye is going to fall down. I expect, uh, yeah, Beatrice to be the hit, so uh, the Fiendsmith engine also will be uh, different. It still obviously works well in u build, but we'll get to that when the time hits. Uh, for now, if you like the deck, if you said, okay, this is really turbo boosted. Let me know in the comments down below. And uh, yeah, I'm open to your suggestions as well. Uh, we can have some conversations down there. Always nice to exchange with fellow u build players, right? Anyway, that's about it for today. Take care and have a great time. Bye bye, my friends.